The procedure for brain death testing is straightforward and quite simply every step must be completed. Checklists are advised. Firstly, one should assess for any responsiveness. Apply noxious stimuli in the cranial nerve distribution on all four limbs and the trunk to observe for motor responses. The points pressed are pressure over the supraorbital nerve, sternal rub and deep nail bed pressure. There should be no response. This equates to a Glasgow Coma score of 3 or 2T. Any motor response within the cranial nerve distribution on the face or with the limbs precludes the determination of brain death. This includes seizure activity. Spinal reflexes can be present in a brain dead patient. For example, tapping on the patella tendon can cause the quadriceps to contract. The nerves of the spinal cord can cause these movements independent of input from the brain. These movements are rare, never purposeful, and can be highly distressing. If there is no evidence of responsiveness, one moves on to brainstem testing. The brainstem is the most essential part of our brain to living. It comprises the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. The nerve connections of the motor and sensory systems of the brain pass through the brainstem to the rest of the body, and it houses the respiratory center and the cranial nerves, numbers 3 to 12. If just one reflex is present, then the patient is not brain dead. This is why they must all be tested, and one begins with the simpler tests first. 1. The pupils must be fixed and non-reactive to light. There should be no change in the size of either pupil when they are stimulated by a bright light in a dark room. Direct trauma to the eyes and high doses of adrenergic agents or atropine can be possible confounding causes of dilated pupils. Cataract or iris surgery is not a contraindication to testing. If there is no pupillary constriction response, proceed to the next brain death test. If the pupillary light reflex is observed, stop clinical testing as this precludes the determination of brain death. 2. There must be no corneal reflex. The cornea of each eye is touched with a piece of cotton gauze. Care must be taken as the cornea can be easily damaged. If there is no motor or vegetative response observed, proceed with the next brain death test. Blinking or withdrawal is a motor response and tearing is a vegetative response. If the corneal reflex is seen, stop clinical testing as this precludes a determination of brain death. 3. There must be no gag reflex. Stimulate the posterior pharyngeal wall on both sides. If there is no gag response, proceed with brain death tests. If a gag response is observed, again, stop clinical testing as this precludes determination of brain death. Number four, there must be no cough reflex. Stimulate the tracheobronchial wall directly by passing a suction catheter down the endotracheal tube into the lungs. If no cough is seen, proceed with the next test. This is one of the last reflexes to disappear. If cough response is seen, then again, Stop clinical testing as this precludes determination of brain death. This reflex cannot be assessed in patients with a high spinal cord injury. Number five, there is no ocular vestibular reflex. This is also known as the cold caloric reflex. After elevating the head to 30 degrees, 50 mils of ice cold water is injected down the external auditory canal onto the tympanic membrane, the eardrum, for a minute. The ear canal must be free from wax. The eyelids are kept open throughout this test and if no ocular movements are seen on either side during irrigation, one can proceed with the next brain death test. Any eye movement, including tiny repetitive twitches called nystagmus, precludes the determination of brain death. Number six, there must be no facial movements in response to painful stimuli. This was tested when we were assessing for responsiveness, but it bears repeating. As it tests cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, which comes directly from the brainstem and supplies sensation to the face, and cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, which also comes straight from the brainstem and controls the motor function of the facial muscles. Patients with high spinal cord injuries can still move their facial muscles. Patients with strokes in their brainstem can be missing this reflex. They can, however, maintain vertical eye movements and the ability to blink via the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number 3. They would also retain pupillary responses to light, as this is controlled via the optic nerve, 
cranial nerve number two. The final test used to confirm someone brain dead is the apnea test. Before the test begins, an arterial blood gas is performed to determine the oxygen, carbon dioxide and pH levels in the blood are within normal limits. The patient is then ventilated with 100% oxygen for at least 5 minutes in order to saturate the body with oxygen and prevent hypoxemia during the test. The patient is then disconnected from the ventilator and observed continuously for any spontaneous respirations. Oxygen is still supplied to the patient either via a T-piece at 15 litres per minute or via suction catheter placed in the ET tube at 6 litres per minute. It is difficult to use the spontaneous breathing modes on a ventilator to perform the apnea test as they alarm when the patient does not trigger the ventilator and backup safety modes come into effect to resume mechanically controlled ventilatory support. Typically, after a period of 10 minutes, another blood gas is drawn. It can be taken earlier if the patient becomes unstable, which would require reinstituting ventilatory support. If the carbon dioxide level in the blood has risen to above 6.6 .6 kilopascals or 50 millimeters of mercury and no respirations have been seen, the patient can be declared brain dead. The time of the final blood gas is legally the time of death. It is the time when all brainstem tests were completed. So to recap, to confirm brain death clinically after all preconditions are met, there must be no response to noxious stimuli, there must be no papillary reflex, no corneal reflex, no gag reflex, no cough reflex, no eye response to ice cold water instilled onto the eardrum, and no evidence of any breathing effort in the setting of a high carbon dioxide level in the blood. Only then can we certify the patient brain dead.